This episode of Cop Block is brought to you by Freekeen.com. In February of 2012, I posted a write-up to CopBlock.org titled, Frustrated, Detroit Residents Compete with Police. Included in the story was a picture of Dale Brown, founder of the Threat Management Center. A year later, when I knew I was to roll through Detroit as part of the Cop Block tour, I reached out to Brown, who graciously welcomed me at his facility and shared with me some of his time and knowledge. It was definitely worth a stop. My name is Dale Brown, founder of the Threat Management Center, located in Detroit. What Threat Management Center represents in general is how to properly manage human threats to create the most nonviolent outcome possible. I started in 1995 uh, in the security capacity, helping the community deal with violent criminals. We're doing home invasions and murders in our area. I would call police, I would constantly reach out, and uh, what I found was there was a general apathy and complacency where law enforcement was just not interested as a group. There were certain officers that were motivated and those community oriented officers uh, bonded with our organization and we were able to, with their assistance, uh, create a condition where all the murders, home invasions and other types of violent crimes stopped. The results of stopping the violence and the criminal activity was a good quality of life for the residents that lived there, which ultimately led to the building owners going to the black for the first time in 20 years. And it just took a couple of good officers, and my staff consisted uh, initially, uh, consisted just of me, a dog, and a rifle. And then it just grew from there. I just got volunteers from the community to help out. I got the building owners to give me one free apartment in each building and a small financial stipend. It didn't take much money, but it took lots of self-sacrifice. The key was to put the protection of the families before my own and to think about one thing which was good quality of life for the people there. And the way to do that was to use not the legal system to prosecute people, but to prevent the conditions which led to, which could lead to, violent encounters. And that includes having heroic law enforcement officers out there putting themselves at risk not thinking about themselves, not thinking about getting home to their families safely at night, but thinking about the citizens getting home to their families first and foremost. We need that kind of policing. The kind of policing we have right now typically is an officer thinking about their own safety and that's what they're taught. That false thought process means they can't truly protect anyone appropriately. The cornerstone for protection is love, not violence, not guns, not laws. You cannot and you will not truly protect anything that you do not love. But if you love something, love someone, love people, you can protect them. And it starts with yourself. Having people that love themselves, love their uh, family members, love their community, love people in general, those are the people that can protect the best because they will put themselves at risk for others. And that is the key. That level of intention and dedication is the key to stopping violent predatory behavior. You want these predators to realize there is no way they're going to achieve violence perpetrated against families because, or the people that are there, because when the violent predator sees them, they're gonna realize this person is dedicated to the safety there and they're gonna back down. And if they don't back down, that person will be able to manage threats properly if they go through our training. And that's what really separates our organization from, from any other, is the fact that it really is designated and designed specifically to create nonviolence. but if there is gonna be violence, to make sure that you're significantly capable of managing those threats properly. We constantly recruit, we're a performance-based organization. Our bodyguard program, which is called VIPER, stands for Violence Intervention Protective Emergency Response System. The foundation for its success is in the fact that the individuals that are in our organization in order to participate, have to be altruistic. Our lifeblood of this organization is having people that are really talented, really motivated, and highly skilled by constantly training them. And those people that do not want to train or are not good enough are replaced by better people. We are not looking for people and we do not accept people who are uh, human predator uh, oriented. So people that like to fight or people that like to shoot people. Uh, a lot of times guys come back from the military uh, organizations and I have to uh, be careful because we're not looking for the kind of mindset that says, you know what, it's okay to use violence uh, as long as you can legally explain it. We're looking for people that don't want to use violence under any conditions. What we emphasize is a hundred ways in a situation which would normally be fatal force oriented, a hundred ways to not have a violent or fatal incident take place. We perform 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We protect communities here in Detroit, uh, upscale communities like Palmer Woods, Sherwood Forest, and the golf course. 
We have approximately a thousand homes that depend on us for safety, responding to them and their uh, families and their emergencies. And we have approximately 500 home, uh, businesses that are our clients as well. And then the people that cannot afford our services, we help them for free. And the reason that we can do that is because there is a healthy profit margin left over from excellence uh, from providing for our major corporations. We offer free training to families. We call it Free Family Friday. Typically the prosecutor's offices, the shelters in the area for domestic violence victims, stalking victims are sent to us for assistance. We protect them for free. We ask them to court. If they have a violent uh, ex-husband or boyfriend or neighbor or some stranger that's that's coming after them, we will literally stay with them, transport their kids to school. We stay with them at their homes with our rifles and keep them alive. And in 20 years, none of us have uh, had a court date. And more importantly, none of us have been killed. And the most important, no one who's ever come to us for help in 20 years has ever been injured or killed after coming to this organization. On Mondays, we have a free class for any sworn law enforcement officer. We have a state trooper that I've trained for 10 years who's in charge of the law enforcement section here. And we don't believe in being weapon dependent here. Here, guns are uh, like a first aid kit, something you should have, but not something you should depend on. When they have an option to not injure someone, often they would choose that had their training system given that to them. And so that's one of the things we do is try to fill a person's toolbox, thinking of their mental toolbox as uh, the toolbox that you go around answering all your questions with. We make sure that in that toolbox are so many options to create a nonviolent outcome that it's almost impossible to have violence. So we show you how to get close, how to use psychology to uh, to take that person's perspective and change it so there is no adversarial perspective. And if there is going to be one, you're so close, you can still take control of that person without injuring them. So it's all it's all positive. Creating positive outcomes, nonviolence equals a prosperous outcome. And that's one of the things we want to encourage all communities, all corporations, law enforcement institutions to realize it is focusing on the prevention of the conditions which leads to violence, which is the key to creating a safe, successful society. There is a common fallacy held even by most advocates of laissez-faire that the government must supply police protection. The institution, by its very existence, violates its stated objectives and can never succeed due to the lack of market signals. There's not a trade-off between uh, liberty and security. Uh, you can have both, uh, but you aren't going to get it through the government.